If you have a large Ableton Live set that you want to send and share with something, there's a couple steps that you must follow in order to make sure they can open the file properly. And if you don't, they're gonna run into all sorts of errors. Plus, if you wanna be a good friend, there's a couple extra bonus things you can do that will make their life easier and make sure they return your text the next time you send them one. So if you've got a large Ableton Live set, maybe you want to send it to your drummer because they'll be running backing tracks. You've got to follow a couple real simple steps, but a couple important steps to make sure they can open that file properly. And then there's certain ways you can send files to them that will save them lots of time. I want to dig into all of that and more into today's tutorial. So here's my Ableton Live set. It's not a massive set. It's uh, I think eight gigs big. Actually, let's dive in here and see. So it's like this, a little, yeah, 8.37 gigs. It's, it's not the biggest file that I've ever worked with, but it's gonna work for um, uh, our purposes today. So let's talk about what those steps are when I encounter an Ableton Live set like this. The very first thing I do in Ableton Live is I save my file. And I know you're going, really, Will? I'm watching this whole tutorial and you tell me to save my file. Just, just trust me on this. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is go up to the file menu and go to save live set. Now mine actually, you could see I already saved it. There's no recent update, so there's no reason for me to save it again. Uh, but the first step is to save your file uh, because you wanna make sure you are sending them the most recent version of this and we have everything packaged together. The second most important piece of this is also found in this menu, but is going to collect all and save. And when this window pops up here, we have four options. We want to include um, files from elsewhere, files from other projects, potentially files from user library. I rarely, if ever, check this option to include files from factory packs, but if you happen to be using an Ableton Live factory pack that has extra sounds in it, you may want to potentially consider enabling that as well. Now, before we go on, I know all of you watching YouTube videos hate when I actually explain why something works instead of just getting to the point and telling you how it works. But the reason this is super important is your Ableton Live file is referencing files from maybe different hard drives, uh, different folders on your computer. And we wanna bring all of those into one central place in our Ableton Live folder. And that's what Collect All and Save does. So this is perhaps the most important part of this entire process. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click okay because these uh, files look fine for me. It's gonna go search on my computer. It's gonna find where each of those individual samples and files are stored. Maybe they're in uh, different Ableton Live projects. Maybe they're on different hard drives. And it's gonna bring them all into this one project. Now, I think it's really important once I've done this to go and look at my Ableton set just so you can see what I'm talking about. If I go into the Ableton file project here and click, you'll see I have an Ableton Live set. I have project info, backup, and I have this samples folder. The samples folder is what was added when I did collect all and save to bring all those samples over, okay? So now that we've got that done, what we wanna do is we wanna go to our computer and we wanna go to the point where we can see this. And by this, I mean our Ableton Live project. So again, Will's gonna explain a little bit of the why as opposed to just the how. This is my Ableton Live project. If I double click, this is my Ableton Live set. A big mistake that I see people often make when sending files is they send only their Ableton Live set, but we want our set, we want our samples, our project info with it, so we wanna make sure we send this entire live project. Now, here's one of those pro tips that's gonna continue that relationship and friendship with the person you're sending this to, is as opposed to just sending this project, here's what I would suggest you do. Uh, I'm on a Mac, so I'm gonna show you this process on a Mac. If you right click, you want to click compress. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna create what's called a zipped file of your project. You're gonna see it's gonna run for a second. Mine says it's gonna take about three to four minutes. It's gonna do a couple things. It's gonna take that project and um, you know smush it down, compress it so that it's a little smaller file size so it's a little easier to send. But most importantly, it's gonna make sure that everything that's in that project stays in that project. Let me show you the reason why I go to this extra effort to do this. So let's go to um, one of my least favorite ways to transfer files. My buddy Max uh, on Instagram was complaining about this the other day and I, I messaged him and I said, um, I, I agree with you. Uh, but this is how often I get files from people on Google Drive. So uh, I've got a folder files from your mom because your mom sent me some Ableton stems last night. And um, I've got this Ableton live set and your, your mom's great at Ableton. Um, but not great at sending files. So if I go into this folder and I click in, you'll see within this folder I have, what what even is this? I can't even tell what this is. I've got my project folder, samples, backup. So she started the process right, but she didn't send me a compressed file. Here's one of my biggest pet peeves, particularly when people send files via Google Drive, uh, is if you just drop your file, your Ableton project folder onto Google Drive without compressing, 
I have seen scenarios, and this is kind of the old man in me, and I know things have gotten better, but I've seen scenarios where people take a project folder, upload it to a cloud service, and then go to download it. And something in that process did something with a file. Something's missing, something didn't get moved over properly, maybe a name was changed, something weird happened to where the contents of that folder were disturbed. If I go through the process, and yes, it's a pain, and yes, it takes a little bit, and yes, it means I have to talk longer in the video, so by the time I'm done talking, the file is done compressing. But if I do this and compress this file, when I send that compressed file, that means everything is together and I'm confident the contents of that folder will not change. So now we're gonna pause for me to take a sip of water for this to finish and magically we'll pick back up in about three minutes once this is done compressing. Okay, so at this point we have our compressed file. We're ready to send this. Again, this is all the contents of the Ableton Live project. I know they're safe, secure. They will not be uh, tampered with along the way. And so I'm ready to send this. Now there's a couple different options. Uh, if you're one that enjoys watching videos on the Tic Tac, you're maybe a younger generation, uh, you likely have heard of and used WeTransfer. But if you're an old lame uh, guy like me, uh, I use Dropbox Transfer, which is basically Dropbox version of WeTransfer, but it's included in my account. It works really, really well. But what I would suggest is make sure you send use a service that doesn't require the person getting the file to sign up, right? So if you send it just normally through Dropbox, there's ways you can send it where they can just access it. I've just found transfers really yeah, simple and easy. So what you do is select the file. One, you can see we went down from eight gigs to about five gigs, which is great. Uh, and it's going to upload and I can create a transfer. Uh, and then what this is gonna give me is this is gonna give me an actual link. Um, I can password protect this. I can get an expiration date on this if I want to. Um, and that's just gonna make it really easy to share. So I can send this to the person and say, hey, just click here to download. Now, one other note, cause I don't wanna hate on Google Drive. Um, you can still use Google Drive to do this, but what's super important is at this point, make sure that you have compressed your file and then upload that, right? So upload your compressed file as opposed to uploading your project folder. Because the other thing I didn't mention, maybe I mentioned, I can't remember, it's been a long day. But when I showed you this previously of what your mom uploaded, uh, she forgot to compress the files. And that means when I go to download them, I have to click download and because the file size is so big, it's gonna have to compress those and I have to wait for it to compress, then download. If I upload a already pre-compressed folder, it's just gonna let me download it, which is super, super great. So that's gonna make that really easy to send that file and to share that along. Okay, I didn't plan on this, but you've been hanging around, you've you know, bared with my cheesy uh, dad jokes. I wanna show you uh, uh, just another fun tip and trick if you're using, um, let's say Dropbox, for example. If you're up for it, just comment below and say go for it, and I'll get to that tip. Okay, so here's final bonus pro tip. Again, if you're an old man and use Dropbox like me, um, this is super, super helpful. Again, I would use transfer, but here's another way you can do it. So, um, I, oh my gosh, that's terrible. But I've got a video of me pulled up here that I wanna share. Um, and there's a couple different ways to share on Dropbox, but you can go here and click share. Uh, I'm gonna create and copy a link. Okay, so that link has been copied to uh, the clipboard here. And if I go and paste this in text edit, um, this is what I'm gonna get. This is what the link looks like. Now, if I copy this, and let's open a window here so I'm not logged in and go to Dropbox. Uh, what you're gonna get is it's gonna take you to a Dropbox page. You could 100% click download. That's gonna work, that's, you know, that's fine. They don't have to sign up for Dropbox. But I've found in a lot of scenarios, people get confused by this page and they go, okay, uh, Will, it's asking me to sign in or sign up to download. And then you have to say, no, just click download in the upper left and then they're fine and they're good to go. But here's, again, a little hack that I use uh, that has come uh, in handy quite often when working with Dropbox. So let's go back to our link here. So again, I've got this pulled up in text edit. And what I'm gonna do is go to the end here where it says DL equals zero. I'm gonna delete this and change this to one. Okay, and then I'm gonna copy this. And then now let's go back to uh, incognito tab. We're gonna press enter and return and watch what happens. Now, if you look away, if you're not paying attention, you're gonna miss it and you're gonna say, but Will, it, it didn't do anything. It just stayed on the tab. But look right here, you could see that video is automatically downloading. Now, um, again, if you're sending this to someone that's kind of nervous and scared of technology, maybe that's not the best way because they'll go, oh, it didn't do anything. And they end up with like 4,000 versions of the file on their computer. But I found that to be quite helpful to just say, click this link and it's gonna automatically download on your computer. And if you wanna be kind, you could link up the other one with the zero, download equals zero and say, hey, if this doesn't work, then click this one and click download. Whatever you wanna do, 
that's my extra pro tip for the day. Thanks so much for sticking around and watching this tutorial. Uh, if you wanna learn how to perform like a pro using Ableton Live, uh, then head to from studio to stage.com slash subscribe. You can learn more about my From Studio to Stage community, which is the best, most supportive, uh, and most affordable way to learn how to get up and running with Ableton Live and perform like a pro with Ableton Live on stage. Uh, and if you wanna get access to more content like this, then consider subscribing, enable the bell icon so you see exactly when I go live. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you on the next one. Take care, everybody. Bye.